information when they were going off the war. Now over here on our right is the mansion. It is a five-star hotel here in town. They built this place about eight or nine years ago, and while they were, when they bought the place, at the other corner was a funeral home, and they did not tear it down. They just added home to it. But while they were digging the foundation for this part of the hotel, they kept discovering bodies. And they had got the entire foundation dug. They had found a grand total of 190 bodies. And they were all illegally buried here. They couldn't find any documentation of them at all. And I'll tell you a little bit more about them in a few minutes. But this part of the hotel, this is where the parking lot was. And this is where they found all those bodies. Now at the other corner, that was Fox and Week's funeral home. And this room up here on our right, this is now a dining room. That was a viewing room when it was a funeral home. And Fox and Weeks has been in business here in Savannah about 160 years. They were in this building about 50. Well, that didn't sound good at all, did it? Now, this room with these beautiful lights, this is now a lounge. And that's where they prepared the bodies and embalmed them when it was Fox and Weeks Funeral Home. Now people who have stayed here in this hotel, you'll be laying in that bed with your door locked. Late at night, sound asleep, and all of a sudden the lights will come on. You'll look over there on the wall, and the light switch will be in the own position. You get up and turn it off, in a few minutes it'll be back on. You might spend the entire night not getting a bit of rest. This has happened quite a few times in there. There was a husband and a wife staying there, and she could feel her husband in the bed beside her. But when she opened her eyes sometime during the night, she saw her husband standing there at the bathroom door. But yet she could still feel somebody in the bed with her. And you could see the impression of a body laying there in the bed beside her too, but it was not her husband. Now straight ahead of us is the old Hammer Hospital. This place was built in the early 1800s. This part to the right was added years later. It's the oldest hospital here in Georgia, the second oldest in the United States. It was originally built for the very poor. They did treat a lot of the yellow fever victims here, and it's also been used as an insane asylum. It hadn't been occupied in over 30 years. Until last spring, they finally sold it, and they're making it into a John Marshall Law School, which is really a very good thing because the place is deteriorating badly. But this is supposed to be the most haunted piece of property here in Savannah. Those uh, balconies up there, there's been a lot of orbs and some kind of mysterious movement going on there and on the stairs. A lot of times your phones or any kind of electronics will not work here. Now where you see that piece of uh, orange equipment right there at that wall, at one time there were glass doors there. And a lady had walked up to those glass doors and just started taking pictures. Brought the camera back to the hearse and showed us and it looked like a man and a woman laying in there on the floor with blood coming out of their mouth. We all walked back over there and looked and we did not see anybody in there laying on that floor. There was a man one night, he had his two daughters with him, he had them go stand on the stairs, and he took about five or six pictures. When he took that first one, he noticed the second daughter wasn't anywhere in the, any of the shots. He took five or six pictures total, and that second daughter did not show up in any of them. The two girls even changed places, and still that one daughter, she did not show up in any of the pictures he took here on this property. Now, like I told y'all, they did treat the yellow fever victims here. And that was a pretty horrific epidemic we had going on back in 1820. Uh, we were losing people at a very fast pace. People in Savannah were scared to death. The doctors were overwhelmed. They had so many people dying, they really did not know what to do with all of them. Within a 48-hour period, we lost almost 300. Now, right around the corner of this building to the back, that's where the morgue was. They called that place the dead zone. There's also a tunnel downstairs, an entrance to a tunnel downstairs. Now, that tunnel runs underneath the parking lot, underneath Drake Street, and it ends up over there in Forsyth Park. 
they had long stone tables down there and they used that as a holding area for these dead bodies because like I say they had so many of them they just did not know what to do with them they think probably what happened down there at the mansion is more than likely they had a mass burial down there for 190 of these yellow fever victims. It's the only thing they can figure out that makes any sense. The hospital was a block away with a tunnel that was a holding area for these dead bodies. So that's what they figured out probably happened. We'll never know for sure because like I say, there, there wasn't any documentation. And that was only about eight or nine years ago. Now behind that Savannah Law School sign, there's another entrance to that tunnel. Of course, they're both blocked up now. But you'll notice the ground over there in Forsyth Park lays a lot lower where it has sunk over the years over top of that tunnel. Now, years later, Dr. Walter Reed did find out that yellow fever was caused by the mosquitoes. But back then, nobody had any idea what caused it. And like I say, they were just all scared to death. Now this huge tree over here on our right, this is the old Savannah Oak. It's one of the oldest trees here in Savannah. It's over 300 years old. They did a soil sample around the base of it and it came up 6% human remains. They think probably from those bodies down the street. Looking pretty good though, isn't it? That's a good fertilizer. The Savannah is known as the city built over the dead. There's been quite a few times they have discovered bodies where they had absolutely no idea there were any. That church I was telling you about where the feather was floating around in front of it for the Forrest Gump movie. It's been a few years back now. They were doing some work down there in the basement. They were having some plumbing problems. And the workers did discover human remains down there. But by the time the media showed up, all of a sudden it got real hush-hush and they told the media it was animal fire because they did not want anybody to know they found human remains there because that place is on the National Historic Register and they knew they'd have to do some extensive demolition there. So those people are still down in the basement resting peacefully. <laughs> Now over here on our right is Massey School. It is the oldest school here in Savannah. I am allowed to pull over here and talk for a few minutes. But we're interested in this house over here on our left, the one that's got the lights on on the top floor. That is the Benjamin Wilson house. Nobody's lived in this house in over seven years. The owners do have a timer up there for the lights to come on. But the window on the right-hand side, that second level, that long one with the shutters on it, a little girl's been seen looking out that window, but nobody lived there for over seven years. Now, Benjamin Wilson lived there with his daughter, who was a very strict parent, and this child misbehaved. The way he disciplined her was to tie her to a chair, and he'd set her there at the living room window, and he'd make her sit there the entire day. Well, unfortunately, this child misbehaved on a hot summer day, and you know it gets pretty doggone hot down here. He sets, ties her to the chair, sets her there at the living room window. He didn't think about the heat coming through those glass window panes. When he came back later on, he found her slumped over in the chair, dead from heat stroke. Now, he went upstairs and hung himself, because he was pretty upset what he had done to his daughter. Now, at the top of that window where you see the crown molding, to the right hand side of it. It's hard to see at night, but it's like a gray discoloration. And right in the center of that discoloration, it looks like a man's face. You can almost make out the black hat he's got on, and you can see his eyes, his nose, his mouth, and he's either got a pointy chin or a goatee. But it's just sort of eerie how this all worked out. She died at that window. She has been seen looking out that window. And now over the years, this discoloration makes it look like a man sort of guarding over that window. Now in the 50s, a couple lived there and they had three daughters. And the girls were old enough to stay at home by themselves. So mom and dad went out one night and left them there. When they came back later, all three of them had been brutally murdered. One of them had been stuffed in the closet. They never did solve this mystery. They have absolutely no idea who killed those girls, unless it was Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, maybe his daughter. 